Let's get back on that 32 Ford. Hey everybody, it's Kenny Conklin from HobbyLinkInternational.com. Welcome to another YouTube video. Today we're going to take a look at the work I did on the 32 Ford and you're going to hear me call it a pig a few times because of mold lines and injector pin marks. Just not happy with that, but we're chugging along with the build. So let's get over to the build and show you what I've been up to. So the last time you saw the engine, it was all in primer. I didn't build it on any of the videos because I built this probably over a year ago. Maybe, no, nah, probably even longer than that. But it's all painted up. Use Scale 75 Vallejo to me uh, ammo a whole bunch of different colors i made it so that the person that owns the car started putting their own custom parts on here just didn't have enough money to do everything custom but they're trying their best to get this car built so here's the the nice little engine this is my first engine like i said in 39 years somewhere around there it's been a long time but it was fun building this so far the kit though is a pig on injector pin marks and some of the seams don't fit too well but we're going to get to more building right here in this video next up we're going to hit the rim uh, in New York we call them rims I think some people call them wheels like I said I'm not a big car guy but we're gonna get on to these we're gonna spray these up a custom color the custom colors are gonna pretty much match throughout the whole build so we're gonna be using that titanium blue uh, I just fell in love with that color so we're gonna get to work on these the color we're gonna be using for the rims is the bluish titanium from ammo by MIG they're metal metal acrylics just to give you a heads up I've had problems with these drying the engine took like three or four days for this paint to dry I'm not sure why I even hit it with the hair dryer. So if you're using these, it could be the temperature in here and stuff like that. But if you're using these, beware, it might take you a little longer for these to dry out. Okay, let's get to painting these guys up. Hopefully the air compressor isn't too loud over this. Just gonna be doing light coats on all of them until we build up the color. Just going back and forth, back and forth. I'm gonna end up having to rotate these guys. Just simple as that. Now, I wish I would have had a bigger stick. This way I could have held that a lot easier. And I just got to keep going around to make sure I get all that white. And these will look pretty sweet. And then after these are dry, I am going to make them glossy with Mr. S Mr. Super Clear, and that'll be their gloss coat. So I'm just gonna go another light coat or two on these, get them built up, get them a nice color on there, and then we'll dry them out and we'll put the gloss coat on here. Now, like I was saying, some parts are gonna have like where the chrome was before, and some aren't, just because the kid that owns this car is working really hard to build it up, so he doesn't have all the parts yet. This is just a, another, I, I forget what these bars are called off the side, but this is gonna be another part that's built up with the same color we would using before. Oh, got a little got a little trigger happy on that one. Now, what's going on now is a lot of a lot of tip dry is going on. So I'm going to show you a real quick tip how I get rid of the tip dry. I can tell the tip is getting dry by how the paint is coming out where I have to kind of flood it on there instead of going a light layer. This does build up pretty quick. So let me show you how I take care of that real quick. So this is the little contraption I learned from a professional airbrush artist. I watched his video on YouTube and it was a long time ago. I can't remember who it was, but all you need is 91% isopropyl alcohol and this little gizmo which I will zoom in on and show you exactly what it is. So basically all it is is two toothbrushes. I found a stiffer medium bristle brush. You put them together you may have to heat up one end so they meet like this and all you do is take isopropyl alcohol put it on the brushes and then you rub it over the needle and I'll show you that here. Now hopefully you can see that built up paint on the needle right there. It's just the blue metallic paint. All you do is take this guy and rub him a little sideways that way a little sideways that way, up and down, and boom, your needle is clean really, really fast. Only takes a couple seconds, keep this on the side, and you're back to spraying. And now I could get back on this guy, and you can see now I could get a lighter, finer coat on here because the tip dry is gone and I don't have to flood it. So it's just as simple as that. So I'll finish these guys up doing a few thin layers, get it nice and neat, and that'll 
get onto the side rack too, waiting to be put onto the car. And there we go, nicely sprayed up. And our friend that's bought this 32 Ford has another nice custom piece for their car. Next up, his bumpers will be done the same way. Unfortunately, one of the sprues broke off, so that one's dangling, but as you can see, another nice quick spray job. I really, really like that color. I think it's gonna look cool and add a nice accent to this car once we're done with it. So let me get some more of these pieces done. I won't keep going back and forth. Once they're done, I'll do a quick run through and show you all the pieces that are blue that I got to tonight. Well, I'm back to these guys. They feel dry. I hit them with the blow dry. They feel dry to the touch. They're not acting like they were before. Before, there was like three or four days, I think I let it sit, and then it finally fell dry. So I'm going to hit them with the Mr. Super Clear Gloss. Hopefully, there's no adverse reaction between them. They do feel dry. I'm not quite sure if they are. I'm praying they are. So the next step is for me to get one of those food dehydrators. This way, I can actually make sure that I leave them in there for a while, and they'll be pretty much dry. So let me get the gloss on here and we'll see what happens with these guys. So we got the gloss coat on them. They're looking pretty spiffy. Uh, I didn't only put the gloss coat on there just to make them shine. I actually put the gloss coat on there to seal in that paint. Anywhere on the car that's going to be flat is going to get flat coated or satin coated or gloss coated. One of the three. Just to try to protect the paint as much as possible. And I'm sure there's going to be dust or a cat hair somewhere in this build because it's not a Kenny Conklin build if you don't find something wrong with the build. But that's okay. We're doing it to have fun. It's relaxing. We're enjoying it. Let's pop these suckers in some tires. I got right back there. You can see the backings are already painted in black. I'm going to pop them in tires and see how they look. So let's put some uh, tires together here. I don't know which I'm assuming the smooth side over here is going to go out and with the ring is going to go in. This looks a little a little deeper. I'll just do one for now. Oh there's a spot. I gotta I gotta touch up. There's actually a spot there. I thought I touched it up. There's a couple spots. So you know what before I do this as usual Kenny Conklin messed something up. Let's uh let's fix that up and then we'll get on the wheels. And there we go. We got the tires and rims all set up. I think it looks pretty cool like that. I think it'll look really good on on the car matching especially the other paint job that's going to be on the car that matches the color and all the accent points i think it'll be it'll be a nice job but we'll see when we get there i'm just going to start working on the front end i really want to get pretty much the frame and the wheels and the front end and stuff like that on hopefully today or tomorrow this part was supposed to be all chrome but again like i said this kid's saving up so he couldn't afford it this is just going to be black and we're going to paint this part here steel well it's that time to hit the popsicle stick again. This time we're going to hit the disc brakes. It's cool to do aluminum. Uh, I probably will do them in aluminum and I'll do the brake pads or calipers, whatever you call them, in red, I think. I don't know. We shall see. Same steps as before. Let's hit it with light coats. And again, this is the ammo by MIG metal colors. So hopefully this dries well. It's a little cold here today and this is really, really light coats. So I build up the color and then we'll do the reverse side after it dries up. I got the aluminum on there. I got the red on there. I didn't put a wash yet. Not digging the solid color of the aluminum all the way around. I know you're not going to see the disc brakes that much in there, but I think I'm going to do the hub in the middle. I'm going to paint that a steel color just to break it up some and make it look not so toy like. And there we go. I think that looks a lot better with the three colors. I used the steel on the hub in the middle, got the aluminum for the disc brake and then the red for the caliper. Uh, I think that's going to be it. Well, actually, no, I got to put the wash on there just to bring out a little bit more of the detail and these will be done and then I could start tossing them on the front suspension or front end or axle or whatever it may be called. Okay, finally, we're going to get some pieces together. The disc brakes on the front end piece here, the axle, and we're going to slide those suckers on here. Uh, just glue them at the pinpoints. Don't glue them on here. And then we'll be able to toss the tires on here too. So we have our handy dandy rapid fuse and a little pin because I don't squeeze any Thing directly onto the model itself. I know they say put it on the pin, but I'll just dab a little around because that's how I do it. This way I make sure that it's staying where it's supposed to be staying and I don't have to worry about it. I should have scraped the paint off, but I got a little lazy on that one. So we're actually putting parts on this guy now. It's actually a shame that the, uh, let me see if you can see it there, the nice part of the brake is actually on the inside of the wheel. That kind of stinks. Uh, but I guess if you lift the car up and you're looking that way, you'll be able to see it. So we'll just slap the second one on and we're getting ready to finish up a front end. Well, not finish it up, but got a little bit of work done on the front here. And we've got a lot of work to go on this sucker. That's on there. Let me grab the right piece. 
Which way does it go? It goes there. Uh-oh, not paying attention to where the point is. There we go. Hopefully I wasn't off camera. And there's the point. Uh, oops, I'm sorry, I was off camera a little bit there. There we go, got a little bit of uh, axle action going on. So the next thing is to pop these suckers onto there. So, I actually wish it went on on a snap like that. Uh, the wheels kept falling off. I had them all the way tucked in. They kept falling off. I give it to you guys that build cars all the time. I don't know how you do it. Uh, coming from a military modeling background with kits from Meng and Tami and stuff like that, where things just fall together and it's perfect. You know, it's a lot different. I built a Humvee that's a wheeled vehicle and I didn't have any problems with anything falling off. But the cure to that was a little bit of DAP Rapid Fuse Super Glue. I don't plan on playing with this like a car or anything like that, so I don't care if the wheels are set in place and now we have our nice little our nice little rims on there hopefully that's not blurry and our front end almost set up to go on to the chassis at the rear axle assembly all done up it was only two pieces it's this big fat part here and then the cap on the back uh, again this thing is a pig on injector pin marks and mold lines I've pretty much given up on trying to get rid of them all it'll take me more time to try to get this thing smooth than build the kit so I'm just going to proceed with the build if something's really, really showing uh, an injector pin mark or a seam or a mold line, something like that, then I'll take care of it. But the stuff underneath and the stuff inside, I just, it's just a big waste of time with how many mold lines and injector pin marks are showing on this. Again, I'm very spoiled with like Tamiya and Meng because you don't have to go through the hassle that you guys do. And again, I applaud you. Pat on the back to you guys. I'm a knucklehead. I thought I had the camera on and I didn't. I started painting and started talking to you guys. But what I was doing, I'm using ammo by MIG flat black. I was starting with light coats, building the color up. Uh, you may see some mold lines, injector pin marks and stuff like that. That's what I was saying before. It's just, there's so much on this kit. It would take me forever to get rid of it. The parts really aren't that bad. It's just the mold lines, injector pin marks. So hopefully I pick a better company for the next one. Hopefully it's not as bad as this. I would keep spraying it, but I don't know if you can see, for some reason, there it is, the black on the tip. The flats from Ammo give you crazy tip dry, so I'm constantly cleaning the tip in between sprays. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna clean the tip, I'll finish this off, off a camera, and then I'll show you the completed part, and then we'll have the front and rear axles done. Well, I figured while I have the black out, I'll redo the bottom of the car, get the flat black on the chassis and the underneath wheel wells and stuff like that. As you can see, I had to reprime some stuff. I was, I was messing with that so we'll get this all all reprimed get those speckles out of there i'm gonna throw it on a little heavier since i already have pretty much a base coat on here and like i said this black i know is gonna tip dry on me so might, i might as well go a little heavier since i'm gonna have to clean 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 the tip way too much yeah what happened before was i think i might have said it in the video before but i actually started painting this and i forgot that i didn't prime the top so i ended up having to prime the top on it yeah i do uh i do some goofy stuff now and then but what are you gonna do and i'm just gonna give it a quick quick spray get this guy back to flat black. I'm actually glad that I reprimed it because I forgot one of the wheel wells last time. So I had to do that. So I'm just gonna finish this up again off camera so you don't have to listen to the darn air compressor going and you'll, I'll show it to you once it's all black. And there we go. We got the bottom all flat. Just waiting for that spot right there to dry. So that's all flat up. Uh, I just gotta do the cap here and then I did the step up pads flat over here. The rest of this is going to be a gloss black and then we'll put a gloss coat over it so that to look a little bit better. I'm not going to put any of the wheels on here or anything until we paint the black up here, get that all nice and shiny as best we can, and then we'll put everything we have to on here. So we got a few things done this video. We got the bottom sprayed up, we got the front and rear axles done, the tires, the wheels, all that good stuff. So we're moving right along and um, I think this is going to be it for this video and we'll do some more stuff in the next one. Well thank you for stopping by and checking out another video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please Please throw a thumbs up on the video it really helps the channel out and it spreads it to other people and hopefully more models will see it and hit that subscribe button i'm going to try to get some more stuff done in the next video probably the bottom the uh interior and stuff like that but we'll get there hopefully it's only another two or three episodes of this one and then we'll start the new year all fresh with something else again we appreciate your time spending with us on the videos the community everything else and thank you to all our members who have been hitting that join button and helping the channel out monetarily that's pretty much it for now i hope everybody has a great weekend take care and bye bye